for whatever you need to haul, I-39 Supply has over 200 trailers in stock at all times with new loads arriving daily. Plus a full parts and service department to keep your downtime to a minimum. Plus, I-39 Supply now offers a full service in-house graphics department for vinyl wraps and decals. Cash, check, credit card, or financing, I-39 Supply says haul yeah to all forms of payment. Five miles south of Portage, easy on off from the interstate. Visit I-39Supply.com to learn more. This is the JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Uh, it's National Friggin' Ice Cream Cone Day. Hmm. Yeah. Everybody wants an ice cream cone. Now you can eat it from the sides. You can eat it from the top. You can lick it round and round like you're never going to stop. Hello. You is she can- still talking about ice cream cone? Because... Paired paired with a high alcohol Oktoberfest. And she's looking a little hot in here. Um, yeah. I, I, obviously the waffle cone, the superior of cones. I won't disagree. Uh there's all kinds of free cones out there today. Um, just Google. How come you don't get free weed on uh, Get High Day? 420. 420. I think think if we were in a state that had legal weed, I think there are some dispensaries that give you a free joint or whatever, probably with a purchase. Okay. I love these food holidays. Do you? Work out really well. Good for you. Spent all that money on a baseball jersey. I'd be lucky to eat for a week. You're broke as hell. I'm broke as hell. Okay, now let's move to Scandal. There's nothing I like more than good gossip. Linden Station. Oh, wee oui, wee. Oui. Ha <laughs> ha, pee pee. The owner of a Juneau County bar that exploded earlier this month is now accused of doing it his own damn self. Heath Fjordan, 43, of Baraboo, charged Wednesday with arson of a building with intent to defraud and two counts each of damaged property by means of explosives and first degree recklessly endangering safety. Wait until you hear about this genius. The explosion in the fire rocked Beagle's Bar on West Flint Street in Linden Station in the early morning hours of September 1st. According to a criminal complaint, a detective surveying the scene after firefighters put up the flames. Well, he done smelled gas, and he found two five-gallon cans tipped over in the basement. There were also gas-soaked rags lying on the floor. Not cool, bro. Investigators also found what appeared to be bloody handprints and a wig that could have been worn in an attempt to disguise the person responsible for the arson. Then it says, a bunch of people expressed concerns to police and fire officials about incidents that happened in the days leading up to the explosion, including about a gas leak that closed the bar on August 28th. Wow. So, officers found Fjordan at a home in the town of Germantown, and rural, rural Juneau County around 15 hours after the explosion was reported. Okay. He had significant burns on multiple parts of his body, <laughs> which he said were from a grilling accident yeah, right, at his house of Baraboo. Making up a mess of bacon. Yeah. Got out of hand. He also denied being at the bar on the night before the explosion. Oh, no. After getting a search warrant for the home in Juneau County, they also found clothing of Fjordan's that smelled like gas. Amazing. The bar was empty at the time of the blast, but two of the three apartments in the building had someone inside at the time, but they were able to get out. So, um, yeah, he's uh, receiving inpatient medical care for his burn injuries. Dude, just admit you did it. I'm trying to remember if I ate. Uh, that was the uh, Beagles is the old... Let's see, because last time we were up there, we were at Leo's, the sport, the one with all the NASCAR stuff. I ain't never been. He's got Leo's has a great patio, dude. Great outdoor patio. I think that's the race bar. I've never been to Linden Station proper. Are you effing kidding me? No. You child. Thank you. (laughs) Welcome. Um, (laughs) Oh, we're going to take a little road trip. There's 800 bars in Linden Station. I know. And a church. And uh, a train. Oh, we're going to go to church? Some train tracks. <laughs> uh, got to keep a lookout. Uh, yeah, I think Beagles, 
It's the oldest, but the old white building on the other side of the street there. I've been in there because, uh, yeah, we had to get a card punch for a bike ride. But uh, uh, you say it blew up? Yeah. Not the fanciest place. Okay. Not the fanciest place. I could see them getting uh, uh, a very small clientele there. I could, because when we were in there, there were two people in there on a Saturday. So I don't know what was happening. I don't know either. Not a, not a big social hang, I guess, but maybe that's why. I do know that. Purely speculation. Let me see. Uh, let me see if I get some. Lind- oh, all right. What are you? What are you a Lindenite? If you're from Linden Station, I don't know. Good morning. He was off the gas. He fell down. He got hurt. Yeah. Hi. Uh, with it's a hard to stay sober up around any of them hills and hollers. <laughs> Last bar on the left. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to knock him. It's just the old school bar. Who knows? God, people are crazy, dude. Sure sounds sus. But uh, whatever. There you go. I hope he recovers well. You know the um, the legendary status of Linden Station, right? Drunk. In a nutshell, yes. Yep. Ain't no law out there. Oh, well, listen, there ain't no law in Crick either. Well, there's less law in Linden Station. Are you sure? Yeah. You got, uh, yeah, there's like, what, five, six bars? And they're all actually really fun bars. I mean, they're really well set up. They're sure. I mean, you know, it's it's a it's a destination, dude. If you want to get hammered, I mean, you go to Linden Station. And you, they just drive through some cornfields on the way home. Doesn't even matter. Like the good old days. Walk around with my tits out. <laughs> yes, Johnny. You yes. said there was 800 bars. There's now 799. Oh. <laughs> so so the bar is gone? Well, it says it exploded. So that. Oh, there's got to be some scuttlebutt. I got. I need some local gossip, man. I, yeah, I like this stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, Linden Station's too small. Somebody, somebody knows. Somebody knows. So, uh, somebody knows everything. So here we have uh, Beagle's Bar and Grill, Ma- Max Stumble Out Pub. Right. Leo's. We always go there after canoeing because they're really, really nice in there. We like their patio. That's why we go there. Let's see. Yep, what, what's Leo's the other Upper one? Dell's Bar. Oh, yep, that's the one we go to. Um, I'm just looking at a map. When we're coming back from Ontario, we uh, make a pit stop in the station. Okay, it's like halfway home. Uh, Norms, Billy's. Norms and Billy's. Linden Station's known for their great pizza. It's where the pizza was born, John. Hello. You love maps. They got lots of it. Uh, morning. Don't say. Woo. Swagger in. Morning. Uh, this is WJJO. It is. Yep. I just have some info on the uh, bar explosion up in uh, Linden Station. Yep. Uh, it was a new owner bought the bar and fell behind on payment and decided to blow it up. <laughs> See, now, I was going to throw that out there because I every tavern owner I've ever talked to, when you ask them what, if they would buy the bar again, they always say no. Right. What, what's your business plan? I'm going to blow the bar up. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, interesting. Yeah, so you buy a bar uh, up to take your insurance. Sorry, dude, your phone's making me hear voices. Uh, blow the bar. Uh, yeah, take out a policy. Blow the bar up. People will never get away with it, dude. Boy, that's a piss poor plan. It really is. It turns out the detectives that uh, investigate those things can see everything that you've done. Like, well, they don't even tell you how good they are. They, yeah, you you will never hear how good they can. They mm-hmm. go down to analysis. That they did go to DNA, dude. Right. Switches, wires. Yeah. It, it, you can't burn a bar with enough fire to right. get away with it ever. You're, you are not going to get away with it, especially when you throw a wig into the mix. Right. What's this wig doing? <laughs> he sounds like a genius. Oh wait. Is this, is this the bar I bought and it exploded? Oh, wait. 
I had a grill accident. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> that was like an 8,000 pound propane tank in the backyard. <laughs> it's like, man, how much grilling you doing, boy? Well, not only that, but you're going to try to say that you weren't at the bar. They're going to look at your phone. Yeah, so did I hear that right? He had like a, a guy doing it from the Dells. Am I following you right Well, right? he's saying he wasn't there, but... Well, he, right, that's what I'm... How the hell he gets so burnt? He weren't yeah, there. and he was the one that was burnt, too. Yeah. Yeah. So... Boy, that's, that's not a good plan. No, dude. And how you know you're only going to blow up your bar? I mean... There were apartments. There were two people inside the apartments right there. Mm-hmm. Did I miss that? Are the apartments a part of the bar or behind it? He, listen, um, the bar was empty at the time of the blast. Two of the three apartments in the building <laughs> had someone inside at the time. Wow. What a jackhole. Yeah. You're bad at what you're doing. Dude, there's only one way to fix this. Put an effing Popeye's chicken on that corner. I'll move to Linden Station today. Is Popeye's paying you? No. It's just the best chicken on earth. All right. Get a couple of cocktails in you. Tell me that ain't the best chicken in earth. On earth. <laughs> Have another drink. You can barely keep a bar solvent or all Madison, let alone out there in the stick. Yeah, yeah no kidding. Yeah, for sure. No now, kidding. Now, I don't, <clears throat> and maybe I'm wrong. Uh, thanks, dude. Um uh, I mean, Linden Station is widely considered the drunkest little town. I would say it's one of the drunkest. And, I, and, and maybe uh, people get mad at, at having that reputation. But it's just literally bars. You just go there for a, I mean, a bachelor party. So you just We go there for that reason. To get drunk? Well, not to get drunk, but I mean, you know, road trip, fun, fall trip, whatever, you know. It's the greatest concentration of bars probably in, since Iron Mountain, whatever, wherever. What's Iron Mountain? Or, or, or no, where's the strip clubs out up north? Having a brain fart. Manaqua. Eagle River. I don't know. No, I mean just like bar, 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 cross street, bar, bar. Just that. I don't know, dude. I'm beginning to think you're a different level of drunk than I am. <laughs> <laughs> you holding out on me, boy? You going to a town with 16 uh, bars and that, like, that calling me? I Yeah. What else are you keeping from me? Well, I don't mean to besmirch Linden Station, but it's not like you're going there to find religion. Nobody's moving to Linden Station. You're going there to get effed up and play pull tabs. Well? The whole economy of Linden Station is based on people getting effed up. And good food, by the way. Leave the food out. It's got to be tough. It's got to be a struggle out there, I'm sure. I peed at that BP when it was closed it was outside by a tree. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. This is why we can't have nice things. Well, uh, if you're going to pee anywhere on a tree, it's never more appropriate than Linden Station. That's right. They have trees earmarked for people to pee on them. Do they? Yeah. I don't know that I found that one. Hi, how's it going? Yeah, the good thing about a town like Linden Station, 400 people, there's nine bars. You blow one up, there's still eight bars. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. Uh, yeah, I mean... Um, so in Crick, we only have, we've got Corner Bar and Tappers and Highway Harry's. That's it for bars. You got to drive out to Aslan. I mean, that's a few miles out of town. Mm -hmm. So you can't count that. And how many people what are Remember that bar in uh, Johnson Creek on the corner there you used to go to? The Corner Bar. Is it still open? Yeah, but it's different owner owners. It's great, a Corner Bar. Great bar, that old brick. Okay, and there are 3,000 people that live in Johnson Creek, and mm -hmm. we only have yeah, that's weird. three bars. We should open a roadhouse. No. 
We just went over this. No, in the back of Rob's Performance Motorsports. He won't even know we're back there. There's plenty of parking. It's making moonshine. Rob can pay the rent, and we'll, we just go back there and make beer. You have a lot of plenty. You're an ideas man, I see. <laughs> Rob, right now, changing his phone number. <laughs> Hi. Hi. That might be operator error. You think so? They got the guy. Yeah, they have the guy. The guy with burnt hands. He's in the hospital right now, yeah. getting his burns treated. Hi, that'll learn you. Yeah, the bar you're, you're the town you're talking about was Hurley, sixteen bars. Oh yeah, on that's corner. that's it. I was gonna say Hurley would take uh, would make London Station look like an amateur hour. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, Hurley's fun. I haven't been up there in years either. I just I. It's near. How far is Iron Mountain from Hurley? You're close, aren't you? Iron Mountain's about an hour. Ironwood's fifteen minutes. Okay. We still run up ski in Iron Mountain and hit Hurley for titties. Yes, I used to is your uh, is your uh, is your mom still dancing up in Hurley? No, my mom never danced up there, but my girlfriend might have. No, there you go. Weird. Because I could have swore that was your mom. All right, thanks. Uh, well, yep. Bye. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> this guy's got some serious talent. If you can't light a fire without gas and a, and a match, <laughs> right, and run a bar at the same well, time. Well, I don't know how else you do it. I mean, uh, uh, he over uh, planned his plan. Well, exactly. But I mean, how many fires have you lit with a can of gasoline? A bunch, you know. You're, you're in your backyard. How many times have you burned yourself? Yeah. I mean, every time. This guy's obviously talented enough to run a bar, then, huh? Yeah, I, it doesn't sound like he really thought that through too much, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> When's the last time you were in Linden Station? Uh, uh earlier this summer, I was up at uh, um, that uh, state park that's right there at uh, the end of uh, Camp Douglas. Okay, I, I was just wondering yeah. if you went there to get hammered or you went for recreation. No, I went to the quick trip to get beer. Boom. Quick trip, oh. what up? We're all in this together. Yeah. All right, man, thanks. Dude. Uh, yep, bye. See, he's got an alibi. He was at the damn quick trip. You can get a hotel room in Hurley for $54. <laughs> right above the strip club. Yeah, look at this. There's a fireman's pole you take right out of your uh, bathroom down into the strip club. It's the same pole the girls are on. Yeah, look at Oh, you can rent a and house. And you've never been to Hurley? No, why would I be there? Uh. Dude, it's full of naked women. Uh, yeah, I suppose. You know, we could turn uh, uh, Linden Station into the next Reno, Nevada, if we got a gambling license and a couple of boob bars up there. I choose life, Danger. You know? I can't do that. Well, I'd be I dead mean, in a year. Well, I mean, the city's got to make that choice. I'd be I mean, dead in a year. A stripper would have all my money. Mm -hmm. Hi. The last time I lit a fire, I drank too much, and I ended up like the guy you're talking about. Oh, oh yeah. no. How'd that happen? I, I lit a uh, fire in the backyard, thought it was a good idea to use a gallon can, did a couple stupid things, and lit myself on fire. Oof. Oh, my God. Very high flashpoint. How long were you in the hospital for? Uh, I, it, I had enough clothes on. I just had a small burn on my shoulder, lost some hair. Did your wife give you give you crap for that? <laughs> well, my daughter was in the pool. My other daughter started grabbing a water hose. By then, I was down rolling around, and there was dew on the grass. So I kind of put myself out. <laughs> I put myself so out. I, I can't drink and drive, and I can't drink and light a fire. So, <laughs> all right. Well, listen, listen. When when you when it's your turn, we're gonna bury you with the other great drunks in Linden Station. How's that sound? Don't even ask what happens when I light fireworks, okay? Oh, God. Well, you got to keep them out of your butt. Man, listen, you, listen. We need gonna, to just sit down and drink. Listen, That's it. I, I'm going to buy you a plot in the back of Leo's uh, bar, and uh, we're going to bury you in the back uh, back patio. How's that sound? That's good. All My right, daughter has a video from two years ago. I lit a firework. I was obviously intoxicated again. The firework chased obviously. me across the yard, ran up my arm, and burnt my arm. Good Lord. I am him. This is great. Yeah, you need to, you need to, well, in this case, and I rarely say it, 
you should stop drinking. No, he can drink. You just can't. You got to limit I, your activities. <laughs> I've cut back about 90%, but uh, I sit okay. in the chair and play with the dog instead. Hopefully, I won't hurt the dog. There you go. All there right, man. you go. Rock on, buddy. Thank you. People, relax. What a complete waste. We are killing it online. Have you guys checked the comments? Of cyberspace. <laughs> Smoke That Skin Wagon says, you guys are killing it. The JJO Morning Show Podcast. We're internet sensations. Johnny and D, nowhere but JJO. Katie Conrad sent me a private message. She slipped into your DMs. Hey, good morning. Dell's townies like to go to Linden Station in the summer to get away from all the... Sweat, tourists. Sweaty tourists. Sure. So that's, uh, there you go. That's why that exists. Thanks for the tip, sis. Well, I'd like to put the showboat in her mama's garage. Go ahead. That's the last time Katie is like, oh, I was trying to be nice. <laughs> the last time. I'm done with those people. All right, Katie. Katie, what, I got to find out what Katie does. Katie, uh, secret message me back on your decoder ring and tell me what you do up there. Let me know what's up. Um, is it E Y? Uh, is that how you spell her name? Is that her? No, it's E Y. Yeah, that's what. Is that what you just said? Yeah, it looks like she's a a dental person. Ah, perfect. But she's in a stupid relationship with Trevor. <laughs> so over Trevor. <laughs> so overrated. <laughs> Trevor just all, oh, don't look at my girlfriend. Uh. Right. And then he's like, oh, I'm manly, man. Look at, bleh. right. All I right, go to Trevor. Linden Station and ask Katie to sit on my lap one time. <laughs> right. And now Trevor won't get off your ass. Ah, oh, Trevor. Anyway. All right. I'm anyways. sure he's a nice guy. Maybe they can go to the Diamond Center and get a no interest ring. Yeah. Throw it on Katie. Better make it official. I'm making my move. <laughs> <laughs> Better get on it, Trevor. Dude, this is the best advertising ever for the Diamond Center. I got to get a ring. Danger's going to hump my girl. I better make it official. Ooh. Better get on it, Trevor. All right. Okay. Um. So, uh, it is uh, the fall equinox. Uh, sun rises exactly in the east and sets exactly in the west. It can cause some serious windshield glare, and that is why there tends to be more car crashes today than ah, uh, a lot of other days. Really? Yeah, so because think about it, a lot of the country's major roadways are east to west. So we're either going to be driving directly into the sun or... Dude, we drove home from uh, the ball game yesterday right into that setting sun, and, and I'll tell you, Christy goes, this glare... Yeah. Is killing me. See, exactly. Yeah, it was hard to see. It really was. Um, It's a problem this time of year in general, not just today. It happens around the spring equinox in March, too, OBS. So here you go. Some things you can do that can help. Windex the outside and the inside of your windshield. There's a lot less glare when it's clean. Keep your sunglasses handy. Uh, It's not summer anymore, but you're going to need them, you dumb bitch. Polarized sunglasses work best. And then slow the hell down. Why I don't know. You know why I bothered with that one. None of you are slowing down. What? The sun can still momentarily blind you, even with sunglasses on. No. And keep in mind, other drivers are struggling too. You can try that on a motorcycle when you've got no visor and you've got right. You know, very little eye protection. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's hard to see. It really is. Well, I drive like an old lady. Let's see what Katie's doing. <laughs> we interrupt this broadcast to find out if Katie's got clothes on. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Let's see what Katie's wearing. Katie Conrad. Katie's going to regret messaging you. <laughs> We see you. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> She's probably already uh, doing a, a teeth cleaning and has no idea this is happening right probably. now. Probably. Oh, good. Oh, my goodness. Very nice. Yeah, she would have had us blocked by now. Mm. All well, right. As long as she can get us a free water park pass. Totally. I'm in, or a dude. free cleaning. I'll be right in. Right. We thought uploading to the cloud oh. was something completely different. The JJO Morning Show Podcast. <laughs> Johnny and D, J.J.O. Part of my tough stance on immigration, 
Taco Tuesdays will be changed to Pizza for Thursday. Hey! I like pizza, pepperoni, mozzarella, and anchovy. I like pizza with tsunami, and some cheese and oregano. I like pizza with tomato. I like pizza. We like pizza. We like pizza in the morning. We like pizza every day. We like pizza in the evening. We like pizza anyway. I like pizza, pepperoni, mozzarella. I'm never seeing you. Pizza Thursday. Um, okay. I don't know which one to do here. Stranger Things fans, Palermo's Pizza is counting on you to help Surfer Boy Pizza make a deep run in this year's coolest thing made in Wisconsin contest. Knew that wouldn't take long. Surfer Boy Pizza uh, and its delivery driver, Argyle, played by Eduardo Franco, may be based in Lenora Hills, California in season four of, of Stranger Things. But the real fr- frozen Surfer Boy pizza on sale in Walmart stores nationwide is made right here in Wisconsin. Shut up, dude. You shut up, dude. Are you serious? Why would I lie about this? That's cool. Who's making it? Palermo's. Oh, Palermo's. Gotcha. So was the, they they glommed on to it. Uh, they, it's a tie-in. They didn't have Surfer Boy pizza. Right. Cool. If you want to Google it, you'll be able to see what it looks like. Okay. Um, it's always surprising when you tell people who you work for. Who do you work for? Hello. And that we're making Surfer Boy Pizza, said John Leonardo. He's Palermo's senior director of marketing. It's a no way oh, reaction. The, <laughs> the dude's on there, the yeah. van, the van. What's his name? The van kid. The, the Argyle. Argyle, the pizza guy. Yeah. Right? No. Oh. Ah. I don't know. Whatever. That's, that's really cool. Um, entering the coolest thing made in Wisconsin contest should help Milwaukee-based Palermo spread the word a little further about its tie into the show. The initial round of online voting, which opened Monday um, and ends on the 27th at 5P, will narrow the more than 120 entries down to 16. Um, coolest thing made in Wisconsin. That's pretty neat. I missed it. What are we voting on? Uh, it's the whole point of the story. I missed it. The I was coolest like, thing I, made in Wisconsin. Oh, I was sorry. I was Googling the uh, the God dang pizza over here. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, p- I wonder what they paid for that. You just can't you Or was that a deal with the kid, with his agent? No, I'm sure it's a deal with Netflix. Mm-hmm. The kid ain't going to have nothing to say about it. It's weird. I wonder if they had to send a sample, because Netflix dude's probably like, Dude, who's this Palermo? Palermo, Palermo, dude. <laughs> um, well, I that's a good question. Um, so the event may be called the coolest thing made in Wisconsin, but due to hopes the passionate Stranger Things fan base will also vote vote Surfer Boy Pizza to victory in the bracket style elimination rounds. So yeah, the the Stranger Things fans are pretty vocal and crazy. Um, since 2016, Wisconsin Manufacturers and Commerce has organized the annual Coolest Thing Made in Wisconsin contest to showcase the innovation and breadth of products uh, Wisconsin-based manufacturers make. Man, I'm not seeing the morning show CD anywhere on the list. God. Uh, <laughs> Why do you make me feel small? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, would, I would think Les Paul would go right to the top of the list as the godfather of the 
modern recording studio. I think this is like a yearly thing. Oh, so for, if Les ah, Paul made a new guitar this year, oh, which good. would be weird. That would be very weird. Yeah, then <laughs> it could probably be on the list. Okay. Um, There you are. So it is uh, the coolest thing made in Wisconsin. When did they start that? What's it up against? That sure feels like the coolest thing ever that we used to do. Hey, I got to tell you, after the ball game yesterday, uh, we went around the corner uh, out of uh, American Family Field. I missed my turn back out onto the interstate, so I got on 59, which is, you know, you just go out of the stadium, out of general parking, you go, you, you loop around to the right and yeah. get up on 59. There's a little bar called Fourth Base. Yeah. You know it? Mm-hmm. You know that bar? Yeah, because oh. I've been around there. I'm always the last person to find the cool It's okay. Stuff. My mom, my friends live down there. so I go, dude, uh, we want a burger. He's like, Psh, follow me, dumbass. And they have a cooler with ribeyes, lobster. Uh, 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 bruch- Young women. <laughs> Wait. Oh. Is, is that a finger? What is that in there? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, you don't do burgers? He goes, dude. We in a burger joint. Okay. I had one of the best. Where? What dive bar do you go to and get a forty-five dollar ribeye, fourth base, and it's worth every penny? Good, good rant. Um, so I'm on the um, made in Wisconsin coolest thing ever thingy, and it does look like it might be products from not just this year. Oh, because, so I was right. Okay. Um, because cow pie is on there. And that's obviously, it's not a new thing. Bitters. Um, oh, don't you let the sports people see the customized tables. Um, this is going to be a problem because now you're going to want to buy everything that's on here. I think the first typewriter was invented in uh, Milwaukee. There are so many different cheese curd submissions. You better yeah. be ready. Generax on there. There you go. Shout out to Dot, hardest working lady at Generac. We didn't invent the serial killer, but we've uh, perfected it. We've perfected it. Spotted cow. Boom. I gotta go right to the top of the list. I know, right? So there you go. That's pretty neat. Yeah, but that's very very cool, man. Pizza that's made right here in Wisco. That is very very cool, man. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Great tie-in. Dumbing down your smartphone. One podcast at a time. Listen, rate, and subscribe to the JJO Morning Show Podcast. Get up with Johnny and D. JJO. Oh, yeah. The Trixie Chicks Eye. Oh, yeah. She's got your beer now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Trixie Chicks Eye. Oh, yeah. Well, she's got your beer now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Six packs and bombers and growlers of ale. Let them mix and match them. There's no room to fail. Located out on our East Washington. Trixie's is the place for all your fall fun. I said, Trixie, Trixie. Oh, yeah. She's got your beer now. You know, uh... I love hearing that as it harkens back to an older time when Greg would sing the show open and go back to sleep. <laughs> Very old days. Oh, Papa. <laughs> Peepaw. Didn't he have a glass of brandy with him while Peepaw. we were doing this? Yeah, yep, we, and a couple Werther's originals. Yeah, we'd medicate him. <laughs> Keep him out of trouble. Keep him medicated the whole time. The whole time. <laughs> Trixie's here. Hello. Hi. Young lady, how are you and the I'm fam? Good. Good, good. Everybody happy? The kids are in the Navy now, aren't they? Oh my God! Don't. <laughs> when the first one leaves me, I'm gonna be a hot mess. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Touchy subject. It is. I cry now thinking about it. You do. Yeah. Dee's caught me. Listen. <laughs> and she's like rolling her listen, eyes. Listen. It's like I, get over it. No. I <laughs> listen. Biatch. I won't even talk about it. People are like, "Oh, he's gonna leave for college soon." I'm like, "Shut up!" I don't want him to leave. <laughs> Biatch and I'll come over and sleep in your bunks, and you can whip us. Yeah, you'd make me feel like there's another child in the house. 
This wait one would minute, make wait, dinner, though, so that's whoa, fine. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait just a minute. All right, so uh, we have some beer to taste. This is a great uh, fall. I call it the fall classic, Trixie. I love it this. It is a really good fall fall mix-up here. With uh, 50-degree temperatures this morning, man, oh, man, this hits the belly and warms you right up, man. I love it. Um, now, what happens today after we uh, review our beer? What can people do? Well, you can go to Trixie's and go to the JJO Mix and Match and see all six of them lined up and pick the ones that sound good to you. I love it. All right, and hopefully we do a good job of tasting and describing for you. What's our first uh, beer up here? All right, we're starting with one of our favorite places, Third Space Brewery out of Milwaukee. This Citrus Wheat six-year anniversary beer. Six years they've been open. I feel like that time just kind of like flew by a little bit. In the old Menominee Valley. Yeah. So the Citrus Sweet is 4.8% alcohol. It's brand spanking new for their six-year anniversary. Really similar to like the Oberon feel. A little juicier, though. And then, I don't know. It's just hard to believe it's been six years. Way juicier than than like an Oberon feel. So when I say like kind of like Oberon, don't take that verbatim. Um, But I like the juicier aspect of this for sure. They did a great job. But they um, always do a good job. 100%. I agree. I love this beer. There's not a dang thing I would change about it. It did. Uh, I also had the Oberon thing when I uh, took a sip of it. Um, but yeah, but it, it's on its own level. That's for sure. Um, and I would. Hmm, give me one second. Let me try another sip. Take it to Pound Town, sister. Yeah, I don't know why. Like, I taste Oberon and I, I feel summery. But this puts me in a fall headspace for some reason. I don't know why. It's just the way it is. Move along. You know, it's funny with the citrus why it puts you in a fall space because usually like the wheat ales are like summer, but there is something just a little bit more fall to it. And I wonder if there's like, if, even though it's juicy, if there's like a copper tone going on Maybe, that's yeah. just so minute that it doesn't slap you in the face, like little, but it's just enough to copper like- copper backdrop to take it, it, like an amber. Take it from the summer down to the fall. <clears throat> yeah. Well, get ready for a. It's definitely wheat uh, driven, but get ready for a. Wheat? Why? Uh, <laughs> it's definitely wheat driven, but uh, it's a little. Uh, can I be honest with you? No. <laughs> when aren't you? <laughs> it's a little lemon pledgy to me. Uh, uh, I, what? Oh, dude. Like, like, I'm a. Thorn in everybody's side. It's a. I like the wheat. It's just man. It's a lot of get ready to be pummeled by citrus. It's big. I'm not saying it's not good and juicy and fun and refreshing, but man, oh man, that is some lemony pledgy activity going on there. Almost a little much for me. Mm. Uh, not that I don't look. Unite the clans. It's probably one of my favorite beers on earth. Don't get me wrong. They are great beer makers. But I just think it's a little lemony for me. Still not bad, though. We're having a meeting over here. You guys here. aren't even listening to me. You've said the same thing, and you just said it four different ways. You're having a, you're having a meeting while I'm talking. You're right. <laughs> and sometimes we do it with just our eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know what? I never get invited to the eyeball meeting. <laughs> or the camping trip. Trixie, Trixie, Trixie. Look, look, I don't ask for much, but can you and I just stare at each other for 10 seconds? I'll give it my best shot. Don't blink. I couldn't do it. I literally just looked away. And then I looked at you and you weren't even looking at me. It's like you didn't want the residue. Hold on, I'm wrapping up our meeting. <laughs> All right, so uh, third space. Bomb, uh, generally bomb diggity. That one's just a lot of lemon to me. All right, uh, next beer. What do we got? All right, next beer, Titletown Brewery. I love Titletown Brewery. Oh, yeah. Um, really cute brewery to go into, too. Like, yes. I, yes. I like the aesthetic of the place and everything. Um, so they did the, this is called Gran. Granya. Granya. Granya India Pale Ale with Great Must. Okay, what's great must? What's great must? Oh, I, I would think great it, must is. Let me guess. To, okay. mu- to muster. Well, so you know how to get off a boat. I think a ball must. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> right. So then, Wait like grape must would be like the the essence of a grape, less bally, 
more grapey. When you have ball must, go take a shower. It's true. Oh, I see what you're Wash saying. Wash your grapes. Yeah, on a hot day. Yeah, I get it. I get it. So it's freshly crushed juice that contains the um, the glains, the seeds, the stems. Nothing's wasted. So there's oh. definitely like that earthy touch to this beer where right. that comes from. There's definitely an earth touch. So this is an IPA with grape must. That IPA, there's just there's just earth all over this place. Um, it's not sour or wine like at all. Um, very beer forward, but I just really think that that just like brought it down to an earth's edge, which yeah. is great. Um, I love this and I have to be honest, um, the IPAs have been a struggle for me lately. I'm having IPA fatigue. Ten four. Um, but this is wonderful. And like, you can even get like, the thing that sticks out distinctly when I drink this is the taste of the peelings of a grape. You know, like the skin. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I'm in love with it. Super duper interesting beer. I had it number two. I could not stop drinking this beer. You really liked it. Yeah. It, it's not like she said. I'm hop fatigue is spot on, dude, for me. It's, I'm giving it a timeout. But this one is not as hoppy. Um, and it's almost like fig. Uh, it's almost like there's that, just that thing in there where it's like a grape or a fig or something fruity like that uh that i love uh and I've, I'll, I'll tell you something out of all the beers we had this week if i was going to pair something with a brat or a big angus burger it'd be this bad boy right there you here freaking loved it dude i thought anus it's burger i thought i just say anus burger look me in the eye an anus burger <laughs> an anus burger <laughs> is that what was said that took me a second uh, it's okay. Just let it go. Oh uh, my God. Really drinkable. In, the most interesting beer we had this week is this one right here. It's very, very cool. I agree. Yeah. Love it. Titletown hit it out of the park, man. Love that place. Really great, cool concept. Yeah, great place to visit. You can learn a lot listening to podcasts. Uh, did you know that the hottest chili pepper in the world is so hot it could kill you? Or you can listen to this one. Bears can smell your menstruation. I can smell your menstruation. The JJO Morning Show Podcast. Johnny and D, nowhere but JJO. Yeah, if you were listening to the most revered beer tasting segment on public radio, Trixie's Pick Six. Morning, Trixie. Hi, hi. We've had some, uh, we've had a home run and a triple so far. I'm excited about our next beer. I know. Well, you guys just said that you're kind of like IPA'd out or what was it? IPA fatigued? Yeah. You know why? Why? Because it's October best season. Hey, buddy. It's October best season. The barrel. Oh, it's the only good thing about pulling my sweaters out is that I get to drink some Oktoberfest. Yes. Yes, we're doing toppling glass Oktoberfest today. Five five percent alcohol. This one's new. They haven't made this before, and honestly, like it's so so delicious. I just I'll take another sip. In fact, mm. Mm. that's magical. I just I just love it. Put me on a cold patio. Like, I would happily go out to a cold patio to drink this beer. Hell yeah. This is delicious. It's very malty. There's that slight copper tone to it, but not too much. Mm -mm. And great balance of hops in here. Oh, thank God it's Oktoberfest season. You got that right. Uh, yeah, just like anything Tomlin Goliath does, this is wonderful. Um, uh, I, I'm getting back to the whole thing where water is a huge deal when doing beer. And I feel like their purification system, whatever they use, they cannot make a bad beer. No. It's incredible. Um, I feel like I would know this was from Topple and Goliath if you just threw it in front of me. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All their beers are like that. You have a yeah. nose. The nose, nose. You have a very floral nose. Ball must. I'd like to stick my thumb in it. <laughs> Let's play, see what fits, shall we? Okay, you put your thumb in it. Then I went back to like the anus burger and like the ball must together, and like my brain just had a meltdown. Hey, uh, stick two thumbs in your nose. Let me see what it sounds like. Do it, and then yeah. and then do the pledge. Omg! Do the pledge of allegiance. Do it. Do it. Real quick. What if I don't pick, stick both don't thumbs in your nose. Do what he just told you to do. <laughs> give me twenty bucks. I'll do it. I'll give you five. Oh my Let god! This is a what? kindergarten. Play see. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't ask someone to do that when you don't have the money. Have He's got one dollar. I have a dollar. It's not well, worth I, it. I blew it at the ballpark. <laughs> Just parking. <laughs> Took all my money. This is your conscience telling you it's not worth it. <sighs> um, I'll take the dollar, though. Nice. I, you probably owe her a dollar from somewhere. <laughs> they ought to call it. Do they have a, they ought to, they have a thing called Decora Fest. We need to have that. I would rank a trip to Toppling Goliath above and beyond how great this beer is. It's probably one of the best Oktoberfests I've ever had. Uh, uh, I would uh, say it's the best two and a half hour drive out of Madison. It's beautiful. You, the, yeah. you, you, you could make heading over towards the river. You could I want to through, go out there. Through the valley. And, yeah. uh, you know, we were there. What was it? What's it been? Two years since we've been there? Now? Yeah. I think it's one of the great, most beautiful drives, especially in the fall, you can take over to Toplin. Do you remember our cabbie out there? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. The only, oh the only yes. right in the back. The only cabbie. <laughs> oh my God. He was so weird. <laughs> The only cabbie. The only cabbie. <laughs> Still living in his mom's basement. But he so. came back to get I think, us. I, he did. I think he, he had mom, awesome. I think he had mom in the trunk. It was the of fact. best yeah. car setup that I've ever seen, but there was like five of us in the back seat. I've never been so cozy to D. Like <laughs> even at my drunkest. <laughs> yep. I was just like, wow. <laughs> We were like Siamese twins back there. (laughs) Um, Yeah, he had like his own air purification system because we're in the height of COVID and he's the only cabbie. Right. It Uh, was closed off. It was made with saran wrap. Yeah, he had his... The driver's the driver's side was uh, was like an oxygen tent. He had it all ta- yep. taped off, so nobody and could he had like that air conditioning duct that I don't even know what it did. But yeah, yep. oh, there was. A lot I should have sent there. pictures of that to Road and Track Magazine. I could have got a contrib- contributing editor yeah, right? a, a credit uh, for that. Uh, it was review seriously on that awesome. Yeah. He was so like inventive. Yeah. Yep. And very accommodating. Very accommodating. Very, very sweet. Kid. No, honestly, he he was on time. He was there. He was like willing to wait in the parking lot. He showed up early. No. Like he was he was on it. But what a goofball! I love it. <laughs> it made my day. It was it was awesome. I'm like yeah, this is what I expected decor to be like. Amazing. Uh, I could drink six of these like they weren't even there. God, are these good? These are super smooth, little biscuity uh, caramel. I want all of them. Uh, yeah, there. I want all of them brought to me. Uh, and for some reason, you, I agree. You can tell it's toppling Goliath. I think I could blindfold taste test that and pick it out. I really believe that. Okay. So, I mean, I've had maltier or less maltier Oktoberfest, and this maybe would you say this is a little on the sweeter end? Wouldn't wouldn't you? A little bit. You know, just a hair? I honestly would put this in the middle because mm. I've had sweeter Oktoberfest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's just perfect. The hot balance in it is nice. It's just yeah, per- yeah it's perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Toppling Goliath and JJ together again. Mm. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the uh, second home of Toppling Goliath Showboat Saloon in the Wisconsin Dells, ladies and gentlemen. What 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 up? That's uh, the second biggest seller of Toppling Goliath, next to the, I would assume the. Uh, the the, uh, the brew house is probably showboat. So, uh, shout out to our our friends up there. All right, uh, next beer. What do we got? All right, whole hog, whole hog pumpkin ale. It's the season. I'm telling you, five yeah. percent alcohol. Um, this is from Point. Um, it's brewed at Point Brewery, but it's whole hog, and um, this is one of their upper tier craft beers. It's definitely one of those I look forward to seeing every year. You know, although I don't drink, you know, pumpkin beer after pumpkin beer, this is one of my favorites that's out there. Um, and kind of a quick side note, we found out is. Back when Playboy was an actual magazine and we didn't know everything that was going on, they did a review on this beer, which like shot this beer up to like. Really? Yes. This is what like put this beer on the map, apparently. How long has it been around? Uh, a long time. Mm. Yeah. So the physical magazine. I'm yeah. About the, the physical, physical magazine. magazine. Wow. It has been around a while. Well, we won't hold uh, Playboy against it. No, let's not. <laughs> they, it's not their fault. They were uh, assholes, but they had great taste in beer. There we go. <laughs> what do you think yeah, of the? Where do you rank your pumpkins? Your pumpkins okay. are plump and juicy. Good. Thanks. Good. She's grabbing her boobs. Yes. <laughs> and now she's putting one in her mouth. Okay. <laughs> that this was is, talent. Yes. Anyway, um, it's pretty sweet. 
Um, I I don't know. I was it's almost deserty for me. Uh, I did. If you go to altmad.com tomorrow morning, there will be a post. I paired it with a carrot soup that Pat made. So the savory of the soup and the sweet with the of the beer with the spices, it was gorgeous. That being said, it's a great beer. I could not. There's no freaking way I could drink a whole one <laughs> or more than one. No way. No way. Um, but there's a lot happening there, and it's it's for all the PSL ladies. Interesting. You can't drink two of them. No, it's too sweet for me. It's all. It's it's so the pumpkin. The, the, I mean, the, I can't drink two of any pumpkin. But the, the nutmeg. Although, having said that, it's one of the most authentic pumpkin beers I've ever tasted. Oh, sure, yeah. yes, absolutely, opinion. it is. Yeah. It's like out of a can. Yeah. It's so good. It's, it's like your mom poured up her pumpkin pie recipe into a damn bottle. Mm-hmm. It's super good. Uh, I put it down as one of the best pumpkins uh, I've ever had. It's not a weird overmix. It, it is on the sweet side. There's no doubt about it. But I think it's... Uh, I was drinking it on my patio last night, and it was nice and cool outside. Yeah. I'm like, oh, Lord have mercy. Pumpkin pie season's upon us. This is how it's supposed to work right here, that cinnamon pumpkin pie thing in a bottle. It's fantastic. Uh, I had it as my number one uh, beer this week. Just on flavor, authenticity. It's incredible. They can make something taste that, like that much pumpkin. It's so good. And not screw it up. Yeah, whole hog pumpkin ale. Really great. Or not go to gimmicks and tricks and weird right. tastes and it's all. It's really straightforward. Yeah, it's very not, straightforward. Yeah. Replay today, the JJO Morning Show Podcast. Get up with Johnny and D. J.J.O. To our pick six, uh, Trixie's here. Trixie's world-famous liquors on East Washington Avenue. Look for the big orange arrow. And then uh, on sale at 9 this morning, how does that? How do people go in and make that happen? We're going to have all six of these beers lined up in the J.J.O. Mix and Match, and you get to choose the ones that sound good to you. Take the pumpkin in the Oktoberfest and run. Make a run. Oktoberfest it. will be out before October, most likely. Oh, good. So you should be getting it now. All right. Excellent. All right. We have uh, two beers left. What are we uh, getting into? All right. Into? Next round of War Pigs. War Pigs, War Pigs. This is the Forbidden Magic, the Strawberry Hefeweizen. I really like this one. The strawberry in this Hefeweizen is very seed-focused, so this is not a super sweet thing at all, which I super love, and it goes with the Hefe, like, yeast qualities and everything else like that. I like it so much. In fact, it's tapping today at Growlers to Go-Go as well. Yes. Yes. And, um... You know, we love War Pigs, so we're also going to do a tap over tap takeover weekend at Aftershock Arcade. If you buy any uh, War Pig yep. beer, um, we'll give you free tokens. Nice. So we'll have a lot of War Pig going on at the arcade this weekend starting tomorrow. And today at Growlers to Go-Go, this uh, Strawberry Hefeweizen Forbidden Magic Taps. It's so good. The war, world-famous War Pig. What's that? Indiana, aren't they? Uh, yes. Down there. What do you think, Bianca? Yeah, because they do stuff with uh, my my fave Three Floyds. Yeah, they yeah, do a lot of collabs. They do totes collabs, brah. Uh, wonderful, uh, very Hefe vibe for sure, um, which is my jam. I love the Hefe. Um, I would uh, go to freaking Pound Town on this, just like I did your mom last night. Yeah. Four fingers. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it. I'll give it. I'll give it two fingers because I'm gentle. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> okay. I just about uh, said something that was like. <laughs> um. I'll do two fingers because nice restraint on you. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a gentleman. I'll start with two fingers and ask for three. <laughs> Who said? Who said? Who said? Who said? Chivalry's dead. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. I didn't know. So many knuckles. I didn't know as I was drinking this last night. I didn't realize I needed a strawberry heffa. No. Magical. I was like, okay. (laughs) I I'll tell you what it reminds me of. Uh, One of my favorite cereals is Special K with with strawberry flakes in it. You ever had really? S- it tastes exactly like the strawberry flakes they put in Special K. Mm. Exactly, dude. Um, great flavor. Very authentic strawberry. Not too strong either, so you still get the 
beer style yep. coming I have from. to agree. Yep. The authentic strawberry is there, and that's because it's seed-focused. Um, you yep. can tell the difference between that strawberry juice where they remove the seeds and then when the seeds are included, and that just makes it a slightly more earthy. I love I love this beer. And, you know, for strawberry, you think, though, this is going to kind of taste like summer. I think because it's so seed-focused and authentic strawberries, it does kind of hit home in that fall season. That and earthiness, It's just delicious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice, clean flavor. I, I had it number three. I loved it. This whole six-pack is incredible. It's an excellent six-pack. I hope you get them all and uh, get a couple of them. Uh, wrap one up for your friends. But, uh, yeah, great deck six-pack, man. I love it. So, uh, War Pick, Strawberry Heffa. Home run. What's our last beer? All right, last one's the Poet Oatmeal Stout oh, yeah. from New Holland. This is a classic. It's a classic stout. It's awesome, perfect for this season, um, and just just on point. I mean, um, nothing too abrasive in this oatmeal stout, and you can just – I feel like this is one of those few ones that you can keep drinking. Oh, yeah. Um, it's solid. I'm so excited for stout season. Coco, bitch! We're here. Dude, it's here. And this is one you can uh... – Drink a couple of it's only what is it five six percent? It's not big. Yeah, it's not a huge one. It's not. A big I feel one. like that. Is that a trend now? Yeah, the yeah, light. Yeah, because yep. you know, I, I just it's hard to drink one of those high end ABVs on your own night after night. Right. You always have to have someone to share it with, and you know, I bet there's people out there that enjoy it, enjoy them and can drink one on their own. But like, is that what you're doing every night? Yeah. Um, and I feel like this is just a lot more approachable. The flavor is still there without killing you and mm-hmm. giving you a hangover the next day. And although I love those big, heavy ones for like the holidays when you've got a lot of people around you and stuff and you're sharing, it's awesome. But like, you know, how much, and, and then financially for the brewers, I mean, are they getting you to come back and get another six pack? Right, right, exactly. So- Everyone wins. You know, those big heavy stouts that, you know, some, and I love a uh, dark year round, which is a problem for me because you can't find them everywhere during the summer. But uh, you drink those big 10, 11 percenters. That's when you end up effed up in Elver Park with no pants on. You know what I'm saying? In like yeah. the middle of the day. Think about the kids, dude. Think about the kids, dude. You know what I'm saying? So this one, you can uh, relax and stay. And if I catch you with your pants off at Elver Park, I'm calling somebody. Don't. A friend. Phone a friend. No. My oh. mom. <laughs> Climb my mother. She'll come deal with you. That's scary. Uh, <laughs> look, if, you know, like you said, these this trend of lighter stouts, they're full-bodied. I mean, you're not giving anything up and just crushable. And right. all the flavor. All the flavor yeah. is there. You, you know? don't have to lose the flavor. No compromise. By going down an alcohol yep. percentage. Very smooth and creamy. Oh, yeah. Very 10%-like. Mm-hmm. A great easy drinker. I love it. I love that they're doing this. I, I love it. Especially, you know, you're on a bike or something. You have one or two. You know, you're fine. Right. You can still, like, enjoy your day. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Cool, man. Great six-packs. We had the pumpkin, the Oktoberfest from Toppling. Legend. Uh, the strawberry half of the, the lighter stout. Uh, the wh- citrus wheat. Citrus wheat. From so. our friends. And then... Yeah, really great fall-oriented six-pack without, you know, super slapping you in the face with fall. Just a nice variety in here. And don't forget to check out Growlers to Go-Go today um, at noon. We're going to be tapping the Forbidden Magic Strawberry Hefe Weizen. And tomorrow at Aftershock Arcade, we're going to have a tap takeover of War Pigs. And if you buy a War Pig, any War Pig that we've got that day, you get some free tokens. That is so cool. Come check it out. Right there on East Washington Avenue. Along the magical mile of East Washington Avenue. It's great to see you, Trixie. Good to see you, too. What do you got going for the weekend? I am this weekend. I don't know. This weekend, I might be putting my feet up and just chilling. I think we're going to sneak down to the New Glarus Oktoberfest. Nice. And I'm going to hug Deb Carey without consent. E. That's how you die. <laughs> it is. What? How about Dan? Dan's always up for a hug. <laughs> well, maybe I go down there and watch that. <laughs> yeah. Totally. So, Dinner and a show. <laughs> why why is Deb killing him? Why wait till I have a sandwich in a chair so I can just sit and watch. The JJO Morning Show Podcast with Johnny and D. Listen, rate, subscribe. Catch a new show every Monday through Friday, 6 till 10 a.m. on 941 JJO or streaming anywhere in the JJO app. Johnny and D. Nowhere but J.J.O.